Today I'm going to share with you five digital marketing hacks, many if not most I'm willing to bet you've never seen before, but that have the power to instantly level up your business, sales, and marketing no matter what business, market, or industry you're in. So in this video, you'll learn the simple trick that I use to spy on my competitors and see exactly what they're doing. I'll pull back the curtains and show the simple strategy on how I'm able to show up everywhere, all the time, and for a fraction of the cost compared to traditional advertising. I'll reveal the one simple tweak I use to make all of my marketing campaigns immediately more profitable. Bit of a spoiler alert on this one, but the secret actually has to do with doing less, not more. And a couple more business building gems, including how to tap into a literal never ending supply of content ideas. Also, a big thank you to 10web for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. For now, let's dive right in with hack number one, how to see exactly what your competition is doing with a little competitor research. Four of the most important principles in all of marketing are known as segmentation, targeting, positioning, and differentiation. And sometimes positioning and differentiation kind of get lumped together, but really they're just two sides of the same coin. And don't worry, we're not gonna go too far down the rabbit hole of theory, but it is important to nail this down as it's going to make your competitor research, not to mention all of your marketing, significantly more effective and profitable. So let me grab some paper and uh, a couple pens and we can map this out together. In any market, you have a large group of people that you could technically sell to, and we refer to this as a TAM, or total addressable market, and it's made up of a number of different sections or segments of people, and this is where the term segmentation comes in. So for example, let's draw a big circle here that's going to make up our TAM. This is our total addressable market that's made up of all the little sub-segments. Now these sub-segments are going to be made up of people with similar characteristics and similar age or gender or income or occupation. It could be geographic locations or however you want to segment and sort of identify and classify your market. Essentially what you're trying to do here is you're trying to determine which segment of the overall market that you would best be able to serve and then you're going to be able to focus all of your marketing efforts on that segment and essentially prioritize them for now, ignoring everyone else, maybe until later. So once you've got your market kind of segmented up and divided into different categories, well essentially then you're gonna to wanna to choose one segment to go after. And this is what we're gonna call targeting because you're gonna be targeting one specific segment. From there, you wanna take things a step further and try to figure out how you're going to differentiate your sales and your marketing messages. And this is where positioning comes into play. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can do positioning, but one of my favorite ways is to use a very simple positioning map, where essentially you're just plotting a couple variables against each other, you're putting your competitors on the map, and then you're trying to find out where the opportunities are for you to sort of fit in, but also stand out. Let me explain. So the traditional positioning map is going to look something like this, and you're gonna have two different variables or two different things you're gonna plot against. We could say price and we could say quality. For example, in any given market, the odds are pretty good that you've got some competitors out there that are going to be a high price and a relatively high perceived quality. You're also, of course, going to have those competitors that are the more budget or more economical option, and they'll fall down in this lower quadrant here of the lower price and lower quality. And then usually in most markets and in most industries, you'll find that the rest of your competitors are going to fall somewhere along that line of varying degrees of quality and price. Now, when it comes to these two variables of price and quality, there's a couple dead zones that you obviously want to avoid, being incredibly high price and low quality because then no one's gonna buy, or being incredibly high quality but low price because that'll eat into your margins and your ability to actually deliver a sustainable product or service for any period of time. The key then is to figure out where along these different axes are you going to position yourself? Are you going to go for more higher quality Quality and higher price or lower quality and lower price, where's that going to fit? Are there going to be other variables or other points of differentiation that you're going to be able to, again, differentiate yourself from the competition? Get this part right and you're able to carve out your very own unique corner of the market, something we call a blue ocean. The opposite of a blue ocean is a red ocean and it's red for the color of blood is kind of gross, but it's used to signify kind of a feeding frenzy with all of the sharks going after everybody, leaving very little room for you. So the reason that we need to do competitor research is not just to give us ideas and inspiration and to see what other people are doing, but also to figure out how we can position ourselves against them as a better or different or more unique offer. So how do you see what your competitors are doing? First, there's the obvious ones like looking over their website and their social media profiles and any other parts of their marketing that you can get your hands on. But but what I like to do is see where people are spending their marketing dollars because money talks and it talks loud. Hey, look at me. 
And while not every business out there is responsible and accountable with their marketing budget and the dollars that they're spending, it's safe to assume that if a competitor of yours is spending a significant portion of their budget in a certain area, I'd like to imagine it's working at least half decent for them. Otherwise, why are they doing it? Now, there are some paid research tools out there that can help you do this, but my all-time favorite is completely free, and that's Facebook's page transparency tool. So here's how that works. First, head over to Facebook and type in the name of your market or your industry. And if you happen to know the name of one of your larger competitors in this space, that's even better. For this example, let's say that I've got a business that's teaching other people how to become professional photographers. That's a very specific example, I know, but lately I've been trying to take better pictures of my kids and of my family. Family, and I'm running into a whole bunch of roadblocks. So I've been looking for courses and training and other people that can show me what I'm doing right and definitely wrong. Oh, I gotta take the lens cap off. Now, I could go through and sort the listings by posts and pages and maybe even groups, but I can see one here that I know is a sponsored listing. And this one here is by a photographer that I really like named August Deering, so we'll use this as our example. Now, once on his page, I scroll down to the section that says page transparency and I click see all. This opens up another window that you'll wanna scroll down to until you see a section called ads from this page. And it's here that you can see that this page is currently running ads. From there, just click the go to ad library button and you'll be taken to a page that's going to show all of the ads that are currently running. An important note here, not every business, not every page is running ads, in which case you won't be able to see them because they're not there. So you may need to dig around just a little bit to find a competitor that's running ads so you can get ideas and inspiration from that. Anyway, once you click over there, you'll now have a long list of ads and messages and videos and images that you can look through in order to get ideas and inspiration from. And here are a couple things that you wanna pay extra attention to. First, the ads lower on the page have been running the longest. So you wanna spend extra time here because all things equal, an ad that's been running longer is typically more profitable, otherwise again, why have they left it running for so long? Keep in mind, some people do forget and just happen to leave their ads running, but overall, it's still a solid rule. Next, keep your eyes open for any images or videos or text and copy that's being used in multiple different ads. Again, another good indication that this is an image or video or text that seems to resonate with the audience. Once that's done, it's time to get to work creating your own versions and your own variations of the ads. Never copy and paste directly though. First off, it's obviously unethical and violates copyright law also because you want to find new and innovative and unique angles rather than simply regurgitating other people's content. These are really just here for inspiration. So with that done, it's time to move on to the next hack, which is a way to show up again and again and again for a fraction of the cost of traditional advertising. And the way to do this is through a relatively simple but incredibly effective multi-channel marketing strategy. Multi-channel marketing is a shortcut to building trust and authority in your market. It sounds complicated, but it's really just fancy marketer talk for showing up everywhere that you can. The beauty of doing this though, is that we as humans have been conditioned to associate frequency with trust, a phenomenon known as the mere exposure effect, which means that if you can find a way to increase touch points and show up in front of your market more often, you'll gain a significant competitive advantage. So here's how to do it and do it for cheap. First off, if you had unlimited time and an unlimited budget, the best advice I could give you is to try to create unique and innovative pieces of content unique to every single different social media platform. But I appreciate that's neither quick nor easy nor cheap. So in this case, I'm giving you a pass to recycle and reuse the same piece of content on multiple different platforms in kind of a kill two birds with one stone deal or four birds with one stone. Eight birds with one stone? Those poor birds. And the best and fastest and definitely the easiest way to do this is by leveraging a social media management tool and piece of software. Now there are a bunch of pieces of software out there that will enable you to do this, but the one that I'm using right now and I keep coming back to again and again is called Metricool. So I'll make sure to link that up in the descriptions below if you wanna check it out. The other thing you can and definitely should do is focus on building your email list. Now, I know you've heard this before, but the big question is, are you doing it? I mean, are you really trying to build your email list, to talk about it, to share with other people, and to make sure that every single email you send is jam-packed with interesting and relevant and valuable information? For an example of what good email marketing looks like, you can sign up for my email newsletter just by visiting joinmarketinginsiders.com and I'll make sure to link that up in the descriptions below as well. Okay, next up, another powerful hack that you can use to immediately increase conversions and leads and sales and anything else that you're trying to accomplish with your marketing. It's a simple hack that I call speed up your sales. So let me show you how that's done. It's no secret that people are busy and impatient. 
and they hate waiting. And nowhere is this more clear than in the online and digital space. Sure, I can appreciate how my kids might get frustrated and upset when things don't load immediately at the click of a button. After all, that's all they've ever known. But even for those of us who can remember the good old days of dial-up internet, Just hearing that sound gives me shudders and makes me terrified that someone's gonna pick up the phone and completely knock me offline. How quickly we forget how long things used to take and now expect immediate and instant gratification. And the exact same thing applies to your customers and to your visitors. In fact, Google did some research on this and they found that the odds of somebody clicking the back button and leaving your site immediately went up by 32% when the page load time increased from just one to three seconds. And you wanna know what they found when your website takes five seconds to load? 90% of people leave and they never come back. That's right, no matter how good you are, your businesses, your marketing, and your messages are, people are unwilling to wait even five seconds. So long story short, you need to make sure that your website loads as fast as is humanly possible. I guess that doesn't really make sense as websites aren't human, yet. Let me rephrase that. You need to make sure that your website loads as fast as is technically possible. Which leads me perfectly to this video's sponsor, TenWeb, and their new TenWeb Booster. It's no secret how important a high website page speed score and optimized website are when it comes to ranking higher on Google, increasing your conversions, and improving your website performance. A faster website means up to 7% increased conversions, up to a 40% boost in visitor engagement, and up to a 53% increase in mobile traffic engagement. But improving your page speed and optimizing your website on your own can be a long and complicated process. And that's where the 10 Web Booster comes in, a free and completely automated solution. The 10 Web Booster optimizes your entire website without any manual work on your end. The best part? You can optimize your website on any hosting. Here's how it works. Simply go to wordpress.org and download and install the 10 Web Booster. Then sign up and connect your website and let the booster start the optimization process. Customize optimization modes for each page, optimize all website images, and get full diagnostics on what affects your website speed from your very own personal dashboard. And that's it. Enjoy a faster website and an improved user experience. I'll put a link in the descriptions below, so make sure to download and test out the new 10 Web Booster right after this video. And with that said, let's move on to the next marketing hack, to 80-20 everything. Of all of the things that have impacted and influenced my business, my marketing, and my life, there's perhaps no more powerful and important principle to internalize than that of the 80-20 rule, or the Pareto's principle. I believe in it so much that I almost got a tattoo of it right on my face. But then I was thinking if I got it on my face, I'd only see it when I was looking in the mirror. So I'd have to put it backwards. And then when other people looked at me, instead of seeing 80-20, they'd see some kind of weird backwards version like 02 slash 08. But maybe one day, Anyway, here's a quick refresher on the Pareto Principle, and if you're not already familiar with it, prepare to have your world rock to the core. The 80-20 Principle was first discovered in 1896 by Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, who observed that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by only 20% of the population. He then carried out surveys on a variety of other countries and found that a similar distribution applied there as well. But this distribution isn't just limited to economics, it also applies to gardening. For example, Pareto noticed that 20% of the plants in his garden were bearing 80% of the fruit. And it carries over to modern day society as well, with 20% of the roads getting 80% of the traffic, 20% of the cities housing 80% of the population, 20% of your customers being responsible for 80% of your revenue, and on and on it goes. And here's what makes this one of the greatest hacks in all of sales and marketing. Let's say you're currently running five different marketing campaigns. An SEO campaign, a podcast strategy, an organic Instagram campaign, Facebook ads campaign, and an old school direct mail campaign. If you run them all for a while, here's the outcome that you're likely to see. According to the 80-20 rule, the Pareto's principle, your top performing campaign would deliver 82.7% of your sales. Your second performer would deliver 11.75% of your sales. Your third, 2.3%, your fourth, 1.85%, and your poorest performing campaign of all would deliver just a meager 1.4%. If you're wondering where I got these numbers from, they're actually taken from the distribution of world GDP back in 1989. It shows the differences in income between the world's richest and poorest countries and is a perfect example of the 80-20 rule at work in real life. The point is, at least when it comes to marketing, 
The fastest way to immediately increase your ROI or return on investment is by taking a look at all of the things that you're doing right now and then simply stopping putting time and money and energy into your lowest performing activities. In other words, once you know what your top 20% marketing activities are, you can put all your time and energy there and essentially stop doing 80% of the things that aren't really giving you anything back in return. If you're interested in this and you haven't read the book 80-20 Sales and Marketing by Perry Marshall, make sure to pick it up after. You can thank me later. Okay, so that all sounds good, but what if you're not sure what's best or what to try next or where to even start? Well, my friend, that's what this next marketing hack is all about. How to come up with an unlimited supply of new, unique, and profitable content marketing ideas. One of the secrets behind how I'm able to create just so much content is that I'm constantly consuming so many different sources of high quality information. From the books I read, to the podcasts I listen to, to the videos I watch, I'm constantly immersing myself in the world of business and marketing. So to help you tap into the same unlimited well of content ideas and topics and inspiration, here's a couple sources and resources that I go to that literally never run dry. First is a website called Answer the Public. All you need to do is visit the site, type in a word, and it will immediately pull up a long list of all of the searches that people are looking for. For example, if I type in chocolate, I get a list of things like how is chocolate made? Why is chocolate bad for dogs? Will chocolate come out of clothes? And are chocolate almonds healthy? All of these things are topics and questions that people are actually searching for and that you could use to implement in your blog, your social media posts, a podcast, your website materials, anything you can think of. Next, a little something I call the Google rabbit hole. Here's how it works using the same chocolate example. First, head over to Google and type in your keyword, in this case chocolate, and hit enter. Then just scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page until you see the section marked related searches. These are other terms that Google thinks you might be interested in based on the searches of other people. Now, now you can either pick something from this list and run with it, or you can repeat the process by clicking something and then again scrolling all the way back down. In this case, let's go with chocolate benefits. And then repeating the process, we can click it, scroll all the way back down and see milk chocolate benefits and disadvantages. So we could click that and repeat it again, which leads us to what vitamins are in chocolate milk and on it goes. Of course, knowing all of these hacks and knowing how to implement them and put them to use in an actual marketing strategy are two completely different things. That's why the next thing you're going to want to do is check out the video I've got linked up right here with seven of my most effective marketing strategies. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video. When you're broad, you're boring and everybody just ignores you and you sound like 99% of the other businesses and marketers out there saying the same things like we offer higher quality and we offer better service and all of that stuff that everybody's heard a million times before and they're completely blind and deaf to. 